Hello, y'all, and welcome back to the channel where I am messing around with a heated handle for my Yonce Red 670 Champ, right? This right here is actually, if you can look, 670, and then there's a little V there. It's, like it's covered up by that scratch. There it is. Ooh, right there. V. So this guy is actually intended to have heated handles. All right, that's what the V stands for. I guess voltage, I don't know. Uh, but the uh, top handle must have at some point gotten bent up um, and, uh, and it was replaced by a handle that did not have heat. And um, Corey, Corey Corp was the one who built this. And he's like, did you know that this thing's got heated handles? And I was like, no, uh, I didn't know that. He's like, you want me to leave them on there? It's like, yes. I'm gonna be in New York, you know? And, and so, anyways, um, he sent the, the parts that it did have in a little box. So these right here are little heating elements that go on, right, like, right there on the handle, okay? The little heating elements. Um, what else? <laughs> This is the switch for it. Corey, did you give me a new switch? I guess he had a new switch laying around. So yeah, this is a brand new switch, new old stock. So anyways, um, I've never messed with it. Uh, he, he gave me a better gas tank. The gas tank that was on it was bad. He didn't give it to me, I bought it. But anyway, he gave me a good deal. But anyways, I finally, I got this one off of eBay. The guy was uh, asking a lot for it. And uh, I can't remember what he was asking. It was the, 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 the whole, both the rear and front handles. And um, I, I, I sent him an offer. I was like, I'll give you 80 bucks for it. And he took it. And, uh, and, and so I have it. And um, most of this is really honestly just like a learning thing for me because I wanted to see what the heating elements were actually like. Were they um, solid devices that went inside? of the handle? Um, were they tape that was wrapped around? I, I don't know. I've never had a heated handle before. And so as soon as I got this, I, I cut the external um, grip material off of here. And let me show you what it's got. All right. So this right here will plug into my generator. The generator goes behind the flywheel. Hopefully I'll, I'll show you that here in just a second. And it goes up into There we go. Now I can show you. Boom. And it goes around. There you have it. All it is is a decal. Literally, it's a decal that they put on there. And those little um, uh, copper whatever strips, you know, brass. Yeah, probably brass. Those offer resistance to voltage, and whenever resistance is offered, amperage peaks up, and heat is generated. So, um, literally, the resistance is the load in this case, right? Now, I am a little bit worried, right, because whenever I was cutting that off, you know, I, I saw the wires come in here, and so I started cutting on this backside, right? Thinking there's no way there's gonna be anything here. And I cut right through that damn heating element. You know, I, what are, you know, what are the chances? Cause the, the wires are here, they're here. So I'm on this side thinking I'm safe and boom, I cut right through it. Son of a bitch, you know? I mean, now I did an ohm test. It is still uh, getting, um, Continuity. However, I feel certain that that will break. Um, if not immediately, then at some point in the future. So I will look to try and solder that. Um, what I'll do is uh, I'll go ahead and I'll remove this clear coating that's on there. 
and I will literally try and just solder right in there lightly and hopefully that'll work. But for right now, what I'm gonna do is I am going to literally add power. Just throw some juice to it. Now, I know a lot of you guys are new to the channel and you probably think that I know all there is to know about this. I do not. I don't know what kind of power uh, is generated, but I, I, I do know that using that word generate does uh, uh, say um, DC power, direct current. If it was alternating current, I would be saying an alternator. Um, however, I do think that some stators produce alternating current. I'm not 100% certain on that, so, but, but I expect it to be DC current. Um, how many volts? I don't know. Uh, is it gonna be the typical American, or, and well, pretty much all over the world, vehicle voltage of 12 volts DC? Or is it six volts, like was used a long time ago? I don't know. All I know is that I have tested for resistance and, um, and this whole thing checks out. The switch works and everything. And um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to throw 12 volt DC on it. And I'm going to tell you right now whether it, whether it warms up or not. All right, so this might immediately produce too much uh, current, in which case, if it does, it's just gonna fry out right there where I had a problem. But here we go, we're gonna fire it up. It'll take longer to fill it on these grips because it has to get, you know, the element will heat up and it actually has to get through this before I can feel it on my hands. But yeah, absolutely. There we go. That was enough time. It is absolutely working. No problem. Great. Yeah, 100%, it is working. Okay, so I've been doing some cleanup on this, getting off the black paint. I've never really liked how they did the black paint on the Johnson Reds, um, but I started looking a little bit more closely at it. And right there, wherever I, where I cut through it, see those two dimples there? That's where it was intended to solder onto the heating element. But they chose, and by they, I mean Johnson Red, they chose to solder right there, all right? So that cut is before the soldering joint. No, so it's not gonna make a difference whatsoever. Now, if I had cut right there, right, then we would not be getting good connection. But seeing how it's, it's right there before the solder, it's no big deal. No big deal at all. So yeah, I'm just gonna wrap this thing up. I think what I'm gonna try is that um, shrink wrap. So I've never tried the shrink wrap before. I always do the, uh, the, the actual wrap around, like the baseball bat wrap or the, uh, bicycle handle wrap. So this, I'm gonna try the shrink wrap. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so here we are. Obviously, this is my flywheel and underneath there will be the generator or maybe you might call it a stator or something like that. Uh, but right there, see that? That is where this handle plugs into. Here we go. 
So I don't want to plug it all the way in, but you get it. Boop, right there. Plugs in to the generator, and then it goes through all of the heating elements. One, two, three, and then if you have the heater on the carburetor, that as well. Now, right here, I'm going to be showing you. I'm going to actually look so that I can follow along with you and, and be better equipped to tell you what you're looking at. Um, so this is off of partstree.com. This is the, I think you call it the IPL. I just call it the parts diagram. Anyways, um, you can see there you have your generator and the wire, the generator is going to be hooked to the chassis of the chainsaw. It's going to be bolted right directly to it. And the magnets are on the inside of the back of the flywheel. So you have to have a specific flywheel that is set up for this, right? As those magnets go around the generator, they generate a, a small amount of electricity. That electricity flows first into your handle, and then it goes into your right hand grip, and that will travel from the front of the hand grip down to the back of the hand grip, where there is a small little, um, this right here, see it? There's a little coupling right there that hooks the two halves of the hand grips together. And then it flows into the next hand grip up towards the front of the hand grip. Whenever it leaves the hand grip in this situation right here, it then goes to the kill switch, the on and off switch. The on and off switch makes and breaks, it opens and closes in an electrical circuit. And then on the other side of that kill switch, what you'll be looking at is it goes directly to ground. So you have just completed the, the, the complete circuit right there. And now it looks like it's just a wire that comes out of the, the generator and then directly to ground. It's just a wire is all it is but we're using a very specific wire, which is just like a copper uh, electrode or something. Uh, and, and that right there has significant resistance built into it. Um, it's just the, the material, it offers resistance. And that resistance is the load. And the load then generates heat, just like a light bulb. But instead of this thing glowing red hot to the point to where it produces light, it just is a really subtle, soft, heat-producing element, and it warms your hands, right? Without that, yeah, it would be just simply a wire with no resistance, and it goes right directly back to ground, and it would short out immediately. But it's not that. We offer the resistance, and the resistance generates the heat, and that's how it keeps our hands warm. In a lot of cases, what you have is before it goes into your switch at some point, it will go through a thermostat and a heating element that will go onto the front of the carburetor. I don't know, it might go, yeah, it'll go into the front of the carburetor on the, on the air filter side, I believe that's right. Um, but what it does is it warms up the air right there for the carburetor so that you get, and it warms up the air filter and all that so that you don't get ice buildup, all right? Uh, it's, it's to keep your air free of little bits of ice and moisture and everything and being drawn in. It keeps your, um, your air filter from freezing up. Uh, what else can I tell you? This one doesn't have that. In order to need that, you've got to be in really cold temperatures. And old Bodie here just wants his hands to feel cozy. If it's so cold outside to where my carbureted engine is not going to run right, I'm not going to be cutting in that anyway. So <laughs> I do not need, I do not require the carburetor heater as well. So, but anyways, yeah, I'm super excited about getting this thing working right. I just ordered some wrap. Uh, actually, uh, shrink wrap is what it is. It's I ordered some shrink wrap for the um, uh, for the 
handlebar, I ordered 30 millimeter wrap. The handlebar itself is like 21 millimeters in diameter. And I got 30 millimeter wrap. It'll go over there and it'll shrink down. And hopefully it's going to be great. I imagine I'm probably going to have to put two, um, two layers of the wrap so that I get some nice cushion to it. I don't know. I've never used that stuff before. I might actually put the original wrap back on it and then uh, shrink wrap over top of that. Uh, or I might go, you know what? This stuff doesn't offer enough cushion. I'm going to use the bicycle wrap. But, you know, we'll play around and that'll be a different video. Check you later.